We are in front of a Russian pomegranate mm. that was cultivated in Turkmenistan. The story is Dr. Levin was a, a fruit enthusiast and a breeder that worked at an experiment station in Turkmenistan, formerly the USSR, and he was funded by the USSR. Mm -hmm. And he collected 1,400 name varieties, or he perfected 1,400 name varieties in his 40-year... Of pomegranates? Yes, of just of pomegranates. 1,400 wow. pomegranates. Different varieties. That's he even right. had one that was grown <laughs> in Moscow. Wow. Wow. So, uh, um, wow. Because it would get snow, it was so short that it would get snow covered and then insulate itself and then it would fruit mm. the following summer. There is a lot of work going on on just the right variety for some place because I could not grow pomegranates in Afton, Virginia ever. But now when I bring the bacon home to my family and I show them these plants, you know, this is just wonderful. I was so proud when the first ones, now this is the third year they've ripened for me. Mm. These guys will actually open up on their own when they're really, really ripe. People don't usually see them that way. Let's see if that'll, there we go. All right, so this guy isn't quite ripe yet. But here we go, this, this section here. Oh, they're still tasty. Mm. Yeah, this section here is, is working. So yeah, you can try those. I love pomegranates. Yeah, this is that probably not the way to prepare them for the table. <laughs> but pomegranates in a green salad with a vinaigrette is really delicious. Um, the pomegranate juice, you can actually juice these on a on a, uh, on a little juicer, you know, like a little orange juicer, and you can get mm -hmm. just the pure juice and uh, mix that with a little orange juice if you wish or just drink it straight. So, Michael, I just saw you spit a seed. I'm eating the seeds. I'm assuming that that's, <laughs> now that's there's, okay. There's there's actually, in pomegranates, which this is all new to me because I never knew I could grow them, there's a hard-seeded variety like this one, which is hardier, and then behind us we have one called Phil Sweet. So this pomegranate is a Phil Sweet. And it is not as hardy because it's soft seeded, but it's one that American Americans have probably not tasted because it's it's sweet like Hawaiian punch soft drink. And there it is there, and also the seeds are soft, so you can kind of chew them right up. <laughs> as far as an edible landscaping plant, this is obviously beautiful. The architecture of the leaves is gorgeous. The size of it is also very. Uh, homogenous to what we see in suburban yards on the corner of a house. Uh, I often uh, recommend elderberries, but this has the same size and structure. And as you can see, the leaves are perfectly green. And again, this late in the year, usually you know, the leaves are spotted or falling with something. So this is a gorgeous architecture. Um, you will need to protect it in zone six and probably maybe going into zone five, very much like you would your figs. Uh, you want to protect it, especially from the northern winds. So ideally a south facing um, part of your home or your landscape where there's a natural sun trap where the forest or the woods is protected on the north side and collecting all that solar sun in the south would be a great spot for these. Uh, these are probably very drought tolerant uh, being from sort of the Middle Eastern part of the world. I'd imagine they're very carefree once you get them established. And uh, if they die back because of cold weather Mike mentioned maybe they go down to about minus five. Uh, the root zone will still stay alive and they'll re-sprout. Um, but like a fig, if you put it in the right space, you should get con you know, pretty continuous fruiting off it.